um, welcome to the Texters meeting greet of the Texters World Well, they will help entrepreneurs to succeed about the launch pool with Create Accelerator. I'm very, very happy to see you all. Um, I'm Keta Gonzalez. I'm the implementation manager of Texters, and I will be helping Pete here with me today to answer some questions and to drive the, the comments and the slides. Um, yeah, welcome. If you have never used Crowdcast, I would like to please ask you if you have any questions so as you go listening to the presentation, that you ask all your questions in the little button that says ask a question here so that I can accommodate the questions and moderate properly as we go answering. Um, and as well, if you go to the call to action, it will take you to the Techstars Launch Pool Web3 Accelerator page. So if there is more information or you want to, like are curious and want to look around, um, that is there. So without further ado, I'm very happy to see you all. Uh, we'll like to, we will ask you in a minute if you can put what is your company doing? Where are you from in the chat so we can get a sneak a peek before um, we start as we go. So, so yeah, go ahead, Pete. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keita. It's great to be speaking with everyone here on our first AMA for the Launch Pool Web3 Techstars Accelerator program that we're kicking off here in Dublin. Just to introduce myself. I am Pete Townsend. I am the MD of the program. I've joined Techstars recently to run the program. Uh, with Launchpool. And in the last five years, uh, I've been an early stage startup advisor and investor focused on fintech and digital assets. So bringing this all together in a way uh, that will be absolutely founder focused, a mentorship led program, uh, and bringing the whole uh, wonderful organization that is Techstars into the Web3 space. So I have been. Um, like I said, over the last five years, uh, getting deep into this space, what brought me into this was the last two years of my corporate career uh, with a bank called BNP Paribas out of France, where they, I was actually running their op Irish operations. I read the Bitcoin white paper in 2014, a little bit too late for uh, for crypto, but uh, very early for what I now call myself as a reform banker. And I saw a brand new framework for financial services in front of my face, and I started to pursue that. Uh, and I've been working with startups in that space since 2016. It took me a couple of years to get out, but once I did, uh, I was, uh, you know, hit, hit the ground running. So with all of that, I'm here today to walk you through the program and uh, tell you as much as we can about Techstars and about this accelerator program and answer as many of your questions as we can. Uh, so yes, it is an Ask Me Anything. Um, and we'd love to obviously hear about your company. Right, and, and give it give us your one liner if we if we are, you know, getting to that point. Um, so to dig right in, so TechStars is a worldwide network. We're obviously focused on helping entrepreneurs succeed. Um, the big three ideas is that entrepreneurs in general create a better future for everyone. The collaboration is a wonderful driver of innovation. I know that firsthand from working in the financial services segment for, for 25 years, uh, the last five in the startup ecosystem in seeing how bringing people together from different walks of life, different cultures um, really adds to uh, the problem solving and the overall solution. Obviously, those great ideas can come from anywhere. Okay, uh, but the big thing to remember is that it's 1% idea, 99% execution, right? And that's what we're, uh, what we're talking about here. So we want to have everyone contribute uh, to and benefit from entrepreneur success. We all have these great networks that we've deployed uh, to be able to uh, to be helpful, right, to startups. Um, and that is something that can benefit not just the startups themselves, but also those that are helping the startups because it does come back to you. So year by year, we've gone through the, the timeline here. I'm not going to get into all of the details, uh, but looking over the last couple of years, just seeing. Um, you know, the program, uh, the, sorry, Techstars overall uh, and the framework grow and grow across um, across the globe uh, and seeing the different companies come through that have succeeded. I think we're up to 15 unicorns now, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and you know, what we're doing effectively is adding nearly 500 companies annually to the Techstars family. So we operate 46 accelerators worldwide. Uh, we have community events in over 147 countries, as you can see coming out of the Americas. Techstars uh, HQ originated in Boulder, Colorado way back in 2007. Uh, we have a lot of cities in the US covered, um, but over the last uh, number of years, 
um, especially recently doubling down in Europe um, with the addition of Paris, Stockholm, and now Dublin as well. Uh, and then in the Asia Pacific with Bangalore, Melbourne, and Singapore. Uh, we also have Techstars Anywhere programs, which are uh, remote only. Uh, obviously, over the last 18 months, those have become popular as well. Some of the big numbers here that really stand out for me, obviously, the 46 accelerator programs, uh, the 1 million average first raise post program. Uh, that obviously is a, a, a great result, is being able to get our grad companies through uh, and um, seeing them do their first raise uh, and getting that at a level that's really going to give them the runway they need to hopefully get to a Series A uh, and beyond from there. Um, nearly 16 billion in total lifetime funding raised. Uh, and over 2,600, nearly, I think the numbers recently now went up over 2,600 graduate startups. Um, so this is a big program. It's a big global machine. Um, and the, the, you know, I think it was Ben, um, uh, Ben Horowitz who wrote the book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. He said, there is no playbook for startups, but you know what? I'm pretty sure there's a playbook for startup accelerators and, um, you know, tech stars own that. Right, and from what I've seen firsthand so far over the last three weeks uh, would definitely te be a testament to that. Some of the network participants here, um, the unicorns, Chainalysis, for those in our th space in Web3 would recognize that right away. They're the rock stars of, um, of blockchain forensics, more or less. Uh, and they've done some really excellent demonstrations of, of, um, of blockchain for good. I won't get into that. A lot of folks know the stories. Um, one of the new ones um, that just uh, recently re was remitly uh, that hit unicorn status. I think they got up to a six and a half billion dollar uh, valuation and Alloy are not on here yet. I think they did their raise, getting them up over um, a billion. Uh, they are a uh, digital identity uh, an anti-fraud anti -fraud, uh, platform. Uh, some of the corporate innovators there, you see a lot of the wonderful names there um, of all of the, the companies that we partner with to deliver these accelerator programs. Uh, and so it's uh, we end up with a fantastic combination of this startup ecosystem with all of the, uh, the grad companies that have come through the program and have gone on to succeed and the corporate partners as well. Uh, and bringing those together creates quite a synergistic environment. So the big opportunities to engage with, with world-changing entrepreneurs with Techstars, we are obviously a mentorship-driven accelerator. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the flagship startup development program partners, um, all the investors, the innovators, um, you know, the, this is really the core. Um, we have innovation partnerships as well. We have this Founder Catalyst program, which is a shorter four-week program. Uh, the Community Catalyst program focused on specific geographies. Um, to get this culture of mentorship really going uh, and engage with institutional leaders and then Startup Weekend uh, and where uh, loads of folks in a specific city come together uh, to see what they can come up with for a startup over the course of a weekend, which is a fantastic experience uh, if you've ever been through one. So focusing on Launchpool, um, I met Launchpool uh, a few months ago. Uh, I've been thoroughly impressed with them. They're a fantastic bunch. I'll tell you more about what they do in a minute. Um, and, you know, it's great to be able to partner um, with Launchpool, given their bones, for lack of a better word, in this space, uh, in partnership with uh, the Alphabet Digital Currency Fund, which I'll tell you about in a second. Yeah. So Alphabet are one of the first investment funds to provide exposure for professional investors in crypto asset markets. That's, you know, what it says on the tin, right? Uh, looking behind the scenes a bit, Alphabet were one of the very first investors in a founder that I've got a huge amount of respect for and a huge amount of belief in, Graham Rodford from Archax, um, who's building a digital asset exchange and is the first regulated digital asset exchange in the UK. Um, and um, being supportive of founders like Graham from the earliest stages, once I heard about um, the Techstars uh, partnership with Launchpool and Launchpool are part of the Alphabet family, um, I was immediately drawn to, to remembering that story. Um, they are a regulated crypto asset fund uh, and have really developed a reputation for being on the cutting edge of the blockchain revolution with the companies that they invest in. With Launchpool being associated with uh, and being part of the overall uh, Alphabet family, um, 
Launchpool are an egalitarian investment program. And egalitarian stood out to me because I think it was one of the mantras of the French is a word called egality, um, which I'm not going to be able to pronounce, but Kata might be able to pronounce given she spent some time in, in Paris, uh, which I know what that means from years and years of working for the French. And when I saw this here, it stood out, which is that uh, bringing VC deals to the retail investor just through Launchpool's relationship across the VC network, across the VC ecosystem of those that are investing in tokens and token token deals um, and saying that it's not fair uh, that the the big funds get all of the, uh, the, the great allocations at the right price. Um, so let's make that available to everybody. Um, so it's uh, again, I've been very impressed with Launchable so far, uh, with Shane McQuillan, with Laura Walsh, uh, with Rich Simpson and the team, uh, and Liam Robertson at Alphabet as well. So they're a great bunch to partner with, and I'm really looking forward to uh, succeeding with the founders that we bring on board uh, with um, alongside Launchpool and Alphabet as well. So the accelerator program itself is in Dublin. We were originally thinking that we would uh, we would do this in London, um, but the through what we've pointed to as being a very um, it's going to say the word interesting, but that probably doesn't do it uh, do it justice. A very unique ecosystem here in Ireland, where we have a heavily concentrated mix of both corporates as well as startups um, and across the tech space, and we've got all the leading tech firms globally, the born on the internet companies all have their European HQ here. Um, we have tons of natural innovation here in the Irish ecosystem and this natural curiosity, bring that all together with this two degree of separation. Really, uh, if you want to know somebody, you want to get an introduction to somebody, you just ask the person next to you, they'll probably know them, right? There's that real mindset here and that helpfulness, which really uh, reflects the give first mindset uh, of tech stars, which when we had the opportunity to bring it into Dublin uh, with Launchpool and Techstars both wanting to do this, um, that it was a no-brainer. Um, so we're kicking off in March and running the program to June of 2022. It's 13 weeks. We're focusing on entrepreneurs building on blockchain, right? Those that are projects and or startups, depending upon where you are in your life cycle, that are tokenized pro protocols. All right. And we believe that it is a multi-chain future or chain agnostic future. No one single blockchain protocol is going to prevail here. Uh, and we already see so many uh, examples out there of the startups that are working on these cross-chain solutions uh, and being able to swap across different blockchains um, and without even doing, um, you know, without even doing the wrappers like, a you know, a wrap Bitcoin on ETH. Um, or something like that. Okay. So um, really driving forward and seeing uh, that it is this agnostic approach. Decentralization is uh, is where this is right now in this space that we all live in, uh, but is coming on thick and fast for, um, you know, as the, the, the crypto verse expands across the, um, the financial economy and around just how people spend their time. There's a lot more context of, of that on Web3 um, that I'd love to love to talk about more. Um, but just to focus back on this, we are looking at startups within the overall global ecosystem. Um, obviously, we'd love to have some Irish companies in here. We know that um, that would for a Web3 accelerator. Um, we want to, you know, we're, we are inclusive. We're looking out across the entire world to bring companies to Ireland because uh, it's a fantastic place. I've been here for 15 years. I love it. Want to see more people come here. Um, but also at the same time, it's a great place to get together and have founders learn, not just from the mentors and the folks in the Techstars uh, uh, ecosystem overall, uh, but from each other, right? Um, and we're looking at dApps. We're looking at those engaged in DeFi, uh, building NFT platforms um and during that getting access to a deep stock of advisor which is advisors which is one of the big big uh, benefits of the tech stars program overall so 10 companies will be selected i'm incredibly excited just saying 10 companies will be selected i am incredibly excited just to say that um 
because it is a great number of folks to work with. If it goes to 12, you know, that that's wonderful as well. Um, but 10 is what we are focusing on now and what we will drill down all the application process down to selecting 10 um, during the January timeframe. Um, it will be an intensive boot camp for three months. We are looking at getting space for uh, upwards of probably 50 people um, with, um, you know, to, to have everyone working together for this period and that nothing can really replace that, uh, the physical in interaction now COVID permitting, um, and what's happened over the last year or so, 18 months is that with COVID, um, tech stars have come up with some really interesting, um, ways to, uh, enable that founder to founder collaboration and that relationship development that, uh, and being able to do that virtually. Okay, so doing this at scale over the last 18 months and keeping the tech stars programs going in the face of COVID um, and not being able to do um, in person accelerator programs meant that everybody had to adjust. Right. And tech, what I've seen from tech stars so far is just being a really excellent way to be able to um, at least get a good chunk of that founder to founder collaboration going on, uh, which is incredibly helpful from a learning perspective. What people say is that two years of work fits into 13 weeks. And that that is something that's really irreplaceable. Talk about that's accelerator, right? So the crypto space, I like to talk about that as moving in dog years, right? And that, um, you know, uh, one, it's one year in crypto is seven years in uh, outside of crypto. Um, so being able to do, you know, the two years in 13 weeks is, is more or less equivalent to that. So it's a good, um, it's good crossover there. Um, so month by one month, the first month, mentor engagement, mentor madness, getting that going. I participated in that as a mentor in the um, ABN AMRO Techstars Accelerator Program in Amsterdam um, earlier this year. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Engaging with, you know, uh, 10, 10 companies in, in just a few hours. And you're setting up those relationships and saying, how do we match up? all of these uh, incredible founders with all these incredible mentors. So we've got the right people helping each other, but also getting those um, voices in there as well that are not always everything you wanted to hear because you do need that, you know, the, the critical and constructive side of it as well. Um, month two with ex is execution and growth. Being able to take everything that you learned out of the whole mentor process and people challenging what you're doing and uh, supporting what you're doing and saying, how do we actually uh, turn this into something? that is going to be uniquely um, interesting for customers, users at the individual level, um, for businesses, if you are B2B focused, if you're selling a platform, if you're white labeling something to enable others, um, but also you know, the how do we get off this launch pad in such a way that we're going to grow it uh, and grow it quickly. Uh, month three is a prep for fundraising and demo day. Um, with, the, uh, with the fundraising side of it, um, that's what I've been working on in the last five years, getting founders into fighting shape for funding. Um, I love, absolutely love doing that. And also on the uh, positioning products in the marketplace and establishing a beachhead of customer segments. So all of this stuff across those uh, three months really fits into um, the, the way that I love to work with startups. So, um, you know, really looking forward to executing this uh, with, the, with the, the 10 startups that we bring in. Typical week, we've got our office hours, our one-to-ones, uh, the all hands, um, bringing in the founders from different walks of life to share their stories, uh, different entrepreneurs and alums, doing the pitch practice, working, 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 right? That's what it's all about. Uh, and the workshops, content, presentations, giving you that alternate view on things to help fuel that creativity to keep you moving in the right direction. Working with mentors, here's Mitch Weiner, um, who is one of the co-founders of DigitalOcean. He was talking about the Techstars Boulder Accelerator. Um, is that it's mentorship is one of the biggest takeaways from the Techstars experience. It's important to learn from those who have been there and done that. And I have this chat with advisors and mentors all the time. Sometimes it's easier if you know that you've been through exactly that challenge that that founder is going through right now to just show them the solution other times you got to draw it out and let them let them see it as their own solution their own solution right so it's very you know having mentors that know when to do that know when to give answers or draw out the answers uh and having those types of people on board is absolutely fantastic <laughs> So 
So LaunchPool and Alphabet Involvement, obviously working on bringing all the mentors in. We've assembled a list of about 75 now, and it's growing by the day with everyone that we talk to. It gives us more people to talk to, which is fantastic. Um, we're going to whittle that down to the right number of mentors to work with the 10 startups. Uh, and we're doing that together um, with Techstars, LaunchPool, and Alphabet in partnership. Um, the PR and marketing support, getting the word out there. Um, Laura Walsh from LaunchPool has done a fantastic job of, of helping out with that so far and in, in, in getting that word out there. Uh, and we've got the demo day planning, uh, arranging investors to come in for that, all the business development opportunities with some corporate interest in what we're doing. I can tell you hand on heart already, putting this program in Dublin has already uh, unlocked a number of uh, quite a bit of interest from the corporate level uh, in what we're doing. So, um, you know, uh, really looking forward to seeing that unfold as well. What we look for in a startup, I love this one, two, three, team, 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 right? Market progress idea. So idea last, 1% idea, 99% execution, like I said before. Okay, so it's all about the founding team. Um, I was on a webinar or watching a webinar about a month ago where a bunch of Web3 investors were saying, were asked, what do you look for in Web3 founders? And sorry, what do you look for in Web3 companies? And they all said the founder, right? Uh, and the founding team, how they engage, how they interact. These, you know, we're all early stage companies here is what we're looking at. And um, it, you're, when investors are, are making investments in early stage companies, they're investing in the team. Uh, and when you have added a token to that, you're investing in the community that the team has been able to build up around them. Okay. And it's that team that brings that community to bear, uh, and all of the, with all the influence they have in the market, um, the market being, Hey, is this the right founding team for the market founder market fit? Um, in addition to product market fit is it is a big thing. Does the founder founding team have deep firsthand experience with the problem they're solving? What progress have they made? Um, have you been out there talking to the market? Can you demonstrate that you have built up this community and that they are engaging with you? And then finally, the idea. So matching up mentors to teams, obviously having team be the first three criteria here is pretty critical. Um, being able to then round out to say, um, are you an NFT platform? Are you a DeFi protocol? Are you um, a utility token? Are you a governance token? What are you doing? Right. That is kind of you know, we're going to bring all that to the table anyway, in terms of our knowledge and back backgrounds from tech stars and launch pool, uh, and alphabet, but it's really all about the team and, and that's where we start. Okay. Early traction or validation of a core assumption, you know, um, you know, uh, maybe focus on, on what that might mean to you, right? We are, we really want to see you know, from a token perspective, being able to see that community um, and kind of knowing the numbers to look for there, um, looking at, you know, how far have you come uh, with, you know, gathering users, with getting interest in your product, um, with being out there in, with different corporate partnerships that you may have, with distribution partnerships you may have, um, with some of the existing, you know, big crypto players out there. You know, there are all different types of things to look for here. Um, but, you know, it's really important that when we are evaluating all of the applicants that we can see uh, that early traction. Um, the interesting thing about this space is that um, your product, your what you're doing is solving a problem, right? But the, one of the new phrases that comes in here, because it's a Web3 space, it's not just solving a problem, but perhaps you're fulfilling a desire. Uh, and take NFTs, for example, where it's the sense and pride of ownership. That is fulfilling a desire rather than solving a problem. But could you be solving a problem for um, a corporate uh, uh, partner who wants an NFT platform like a Marvel um, or a, you know, so, some of the others out there that uh, Visa have been involved in this space? Um, and, you know, what are the, what relationships have you built up out there? I'm seeing sports collectibles, NFTs. Um, that are building relationships with pro sports teams and how are you navigating that to deal with, with uh, access rights? So yeah, I went on a bit on that one, Kata, but let's move ahead. Uh, so do we accept solo founders? The commonly asked question, yes, we do, right? Um, and, you know, but it, it, how far along are you on your journey, right? And how, I look at a business and say, you know, there's five things, there's out of the 14 things that any business does, you know, there are five that you do yourself and there's nine that you outsource, 
you know? Um, so if I'm doing the math correctly uh, and jumping around on this, but yeah, yeah the, the, sorry, go ahead, Keita. No, I was going to mention like at the end of the day, yes, we accept all the founders. We just have to make sure that you're around yourself with the right team to be able to build what you are trying to build. Um, so when solo founders come to this, the program is quite intensive itself and you're already running a company by the other side. So how do you how do we ensure that by being a solo founder, you will be able to meet your company commitments and at the same time be part of the program? Um, so it can be having a great team around you, like that you're planning to do it or you have a great plan for that. But overall, think that the program is intensive. So you can be a solo founder, just make sure you have the right team next to you. Exactly. And, you know, typically it's, we've seen more success with two to three folks uh, that are engaged. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot to look at over the next few months um, while we get through, while we get through all the applicants. It's going to be a very, very unique mix we expect. So, um, you know, and it, it, it is different out there. So we'll give it that. Okay. So the deal, uh, 20K. Uh, equity investment in common shares and the 100K optional convertible note. So you, what you get out of that is access to Techstars for Life, the 90-day program uh, with the intense hands-on mentorship with these relationships that will be incredible, hopefully will be, in we expect will be incredibly helpful for the rest of your life as a entrepreneur, as a founder. Um, and that, you know, I, I've seen uh, from participating in, uh, in the Amsterdam program that, the introductions that I was able to make for a couple of the companies and seeing how helpful those were. Uh, and again, with this real give first mentality of, Hey, this may come back to you at some point down the road. It kind of already came back to me because I'm now MD of tech stars of this program. Um, but you know, overall the, the attitude of the mentors is that, listen, we just want to be able to provide some assistance here, be able to help. And then over time, will, um, you know, in some way, shape or form, this will come back to you. Okay. The connections to the, to the tech stars network of over 10,000 founders, alum and mentors, um, which you will obviously have for life. Uh, lots of perks to grow your business. As I mentioned in the beginning, lots of corporate interest in what we're doing here in Ireland with this program. Uh, so we expect more to come above and beyond the, uh, the, the standard tech stars, uh, list of perks, uh, our office space. Uh, at our accelerator locations, you always get access to that. Um, and then a demo day and access to future Techstars events, always welcome, obviously, there as well. The perks, as I mentioned, uh, I won't go through all of these here, uh, but you have access to over 200 perks valued at over $500 million. Um, you know, some of the names that, that jump out there, obviously Google for startups, um, Twilio on the API, API side, AWS, everyone knows what AWS are doing, uh, Cooley, the law firm, for example, uh, and they're, uh, you know, they're real experts in the startup space. So it's great to have all of those folks on board, uh, as partners and providing, um, our founders with those perks. So Techstars is for life. Demo day is just the beginning, right? And um, there, obviously a lot more to come after demo day. And I'm always here to help and we'll be here to help, um, you know, with uh, not just during the program, but after the program and into the future, right? There's uh, a lot more that goes into this from an MD perspective um, than just the program. And which I'm thrilled about because any startups that I work with um, I have a long-term view in mind, okay? Uh, the business development and investor days that um, that will obviously continue. And then the um, additional chapters in Techstars Connect as well that we can provide more information on. So the application process, it's now open. Um, thank you for coming to our first AMA. Um, obviously, we're gonna get into the questions in a, in a bit, in a minute. Um, office hours, we get the one-on-one, -on -one, you guys get the one-on-one -on -one time with, um, with me, with accelerator staff, uh, to during the application process to figure things out and help figure things out. Um, applications open six times a year for 12 weeks. Cause we got obviously a whole bunch of different programs as well. Uh, and then the whole interview and screening process that we do once we kind of whittle down the selection process, but openly communicating, um, with folks the whole time on F success. 
on that platform uh, that we use for the application process and for communicating in general. All right, that's all of it from us in the size of the, the deck that we have prepared for you. So we are ready to start answering some questions. So I see if you have more questions, please remember here in the ask the question button uh, so that I can follow through. Um, you can upload them so that I can just decide which one to answer faster to you. And uh, let's start with this one. Um, interesting. It says like from LinkedIn, it says like, what is the difference in between textures and white combinator feet that you can think of? Happy to help you there as well. Yes. Um, and I know that there is a, you know, from, from my perspective, um, my experience with Y Combinator has been, um, you know, just hearing, hearing story, hear, hearing the, the alternate viewpoints, um, of their approach. And I think, um, the tech stars mantra of give first, the tech stars approach of, um, being a mentorship led program. I think really stands out. Um, and you know, that's from a high level, you know, the, the probably the most important thing. Kate said, do you want to add to that? I will also add that if you think about the way we are distributed around the world, we really believe that entrepreneurs can be like founders can come from all over the world. So instead of making them come to one place, we're just coming to where entrepreneurs are. Um, the reason why we're in Dublin, we're in London, in Paris, and hopefully in a lot of other places, we believe that entrepreneurs can come from anywhere. And they don't necessarily have to go to places like Silicon Valley to, to launch their companies. And they still will get access to high quality experts, mentors, um, and support from, from all of us. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I have a whole bunch of rhetorical reasons to share. Um, but you know, um, I, I, it, again, stuff that I've heard that have come back to me, but, um, you know, I, I don't like to tell those stories in public, so I will uh, I will keep those to myself for now and, you know, perhaps share on a one-to-one -one basis. But yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there's a reason uh, I joined Techstars rather than Y Combinator, and it's because it, it is a global, it's a global thing, right? And um, th that that's critical. And having the access to global experts, mentors around the world, bringing in, bringing in companies from around the world to different cities where they are and, and working with the entrepreneurs in their communities. Uh, it was the, was the big draw for me. And I will like to finish this. Like there is, there is one accelerator, there's a program for each founder. And sometimes if the founders do identify better with Techstars, we will be extremely happy to have them. Absolutely. All right. Um, the next question that is important is why do you look for specifically in the founding team? What do you, what do you, why are you like, why, why do you look specifically on the founding team? I, I'm guessing they're trying to affect what do you look for instead of why? Yeah. I mean, if you think about the team deck of any investor pitch deck that at, at startup presents to investors, you see a smiling faces, hopefully you see, uh, some names, some titles all clearly aligned. Uh, clearly defined who's doing what um, you see some good uh, prior experience that they've had sometimes you see logos of companies they work for in the past or perhaps even the university that they were at and you see um you know and it, additionally the advisors that they're working with and hopefully all of that is clearly defined and that it's those advisors are folks that um are actually contributing and helping rather than just someone they met once and say can i put you on my deck as an advisor um, so all of that kind of stands out initially for me, it's, you know, can I understand that this founder and these founding teams are one, um, ready to perform significantly beyond all expectations and are just driven to do that and have that ambition to do that. And I like to say rock star, but you know, rock stars come in all different shapes and sizes. Some rock stars are the front man. That are getting or front woman that are getting all the attention uh and that you know are uh, incredible singers uh others are the drummer sitting behind a drum kit that actually are the beat and the rhythm of the business that keep it going and nobody ever sees a drummer behind the, the drum kit um so you know there are there's different combinations there um the second part of it that is really the primary part of it. Uh, and the number one thing we look for is, can you be mentored? Are you humble enough to learn and humble enough to say, actually, you know what? Yeah, we're probably, you know, could benefit from taking a different approach here. 
you know, so, so that's it, that, that combination of that, um, kind of outperforming mentality alongside that ability uh, to learn and that ability to be mentored. Those would probably be the two big things. I've got a list of probably about seven or eight different questions that I ask every founder um, and my three favorite ones. And Laura Walsh, you know this because I asked you the same thing, um, you know, and that, that why you, why are you doing this? Why now? Why is the timing right for you to be doing this? Not only you, but in this market. And what is your unfair advantage? What do you know that others don't know? What's your earned secret over the time and life of what you've done so far in this space? And that can be someone who's been in business for 25 years, or that can be someone um, who started their first crypto company when they were you know, 24 and dropped out of college or 16 and dropped out of high school, okay? Uh, so that, you know, and that may come from creating a voice modulator with the old engine of a remote control car um, you know, like I did when I was, you know, 13, um, just like to figure out how things work. Right. So, you know, that voice modulator was completely useless. I will never actually be able to sell it, but it was, uh, it was a fun experience. It got me going in the right direction. Um, is that kind of, do you think that addresses some of the key points, Keita? I think so. Very well. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Um, all right. Um, this is more, I think, about lunch pool. Is like, what geography does lunch pool focus on? Uh, and I think I saw Laura answer that all over the world, <laughs> over there. We're not your, like that. They are not your community bound, except for community investing, except programs from anywhere. Absolutely. It, it, this is a global program. Like I said, we're you know, um, bringing together. It, it's really, really important to me for founders to learn from each other. Founders learn from each other um, even more so when they're coming from different walks of life, okay? And generally by just, you know, uh, by, by having founders coming in from all over the world, we're gonna get those different walks of life. Uh, and exactly as Laura said, we are not geographically bound at all. Um, you know, so that's a big thing here. And, and uh, like I said, you know, just really thrilled to be bringing companies to Dublin here, which is a city I love. Perfect. Do you consider non-technical solo founders? I think we we answered the, the question around solo founders. You know, it, it takes all kinds here. We, you know, what we've usually seen succeed is those with two to three. Um, whether you were a solo, if you are a solo founder, um, it again it comes down to you know the the you know because um, it's team 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 and there's just one. But listen, we don't discourage anybody and. If you are a solo founder, you're generally either going to be a technical founder or a commercial founder, right? So um, it's hard to do both at the same time. So you know it, it's going to come down to what it is it that you're proposing, uh, what's your traction, what's your growth so far, uh, and you know obviously what's your idea um, is is kind of what we're looking at. All right, um, thank you. Um, if the project is still in early stages and doesn't have much traction, what's the best like what's the best spot to focus on the application when they're applying? Team, right? Um, I'll keep coming back to that. In that, I've seen, you know, looking at some of the applications of other programs, and that, and, and some, you know, coming in where, where folks are applying to this new program here in Dublin that have applied to other programs in the past and seeing a comment that, you know, this is a fantastic team, you know, um, if they don't yet have traction and they don't yet have a product out in the market, um, might it be something that we, this team, you know, can pivot? Like we always say, you always prefer an A team with a B product than the B team with an A product. Um, so, you know, uh, if, we're not, if you're submitting an application and you get to that point where it says, tell us about your traction and your growth. I mean, you gotta be able to have something, right? You gotta be able to have, we've had X number of discussions out there in the market with, with Y number of, you know, potential users. Uh, and this is all the feedback that we've gotten on our product. So getting feedback on your product and what you're proposing is one of the first things you're going to do out there in the market. So to me, that is an early indicator of traction. Now, is that testable? And is that provable to go out to talk to a hundred people? That's difficult, right? Um, but it all comes down to how you're communicating this and saying that um, one, 
we've got a problem we're solving or a desire to fulfill. Two, we've got a big enough market of people that want us to solve that problem or fulfill a desire for us. And three, all of those folks have a big enough bag of money to give it to us, to, to you as a company, to make it worth your time in delivering this to the market, okay? So if you can get out there and talk to customers and find out and communicate what that looks like with some certainty, um, you know, that's what I'm looking for uh, for early, early, early stage traction. Right. And I think that along the lines of this question is having revenue critical. We take free revenue companies. Um, you know, I, that that's, uh, you know, we absolutely do. And, uh, but, you know, obviously having revenue um, means that you've not necessarily that you validated your product because it can't, depends on the kind of revenue it is. Is this someone paying you for your product that you've gone to market with as an MVP? And that you, or is it that you are, um, you know, done some consulting work on the side and, and, you know, drove that revenue into your business, right? Or some services revenue. Um, I know that in, you know, from a token perspective, you know, there are some metrics and rules around, you know, what degree of revenue might you generate for each transaction uh, out there in the market on your token. And, you know, uh, it's really going to depend on the shape and size of your business. And uh, if you are at zero, you're at zero from a revenue perspective, but how far away are you from turning on that revenue tap? Uh, and what validation do you have from the market that they are willing to pay for what you're doing? Thanks, Pete. Yeah. Um, are there any legal limitations in corporations of the location they, where they should be um, headquartered? Um, anything around that? I don't have the list. I know that there are. Um, obviously, you know, the, we can't invest in, uh, in companies that are in, I think you know, there are global jurisdictional, um, challenges that any one engage in commerce has on being able to do commerce with a specific country out there right now. Um, Kate, do you have any more insight on that? Yes. As you mentioned, there is a list of countries that we already are very familiar with the jurisdiction and it's easy for us to go and, uh, and I invest. Um, there is others that we cannot uh, engage with, but in the case of that you are selected and we go through all, and I think we're amazing, like we could work into by bringing corporation into somewhere jurisdiction, which actually available for us. Perfect, thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> are you hiring? Are we hiring? You know it. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we have a, uh, a job description out there for a program manager, uh, and that's the first hire to get in place for this. Um, we are looking internally within Techstars, also externally as well. Uh, and But, you know, pairing me as MD up with uh, a full-time project, uh, sorry, full-time program manager uh, is critical. And that, you know, that relationship is, is will hopefully, um, not will hopefully, it will drive you know, we'll drive things forward. So um, we're also looking for a couple of associates as well uh, to get involved with the program. So um, uh, in short, yes, we are. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. I love that question. It was very fun. I've never seen it before. Um, all right, demo day is online. Most investors come from the US or from Europe? Um, demo day, I haven't been engaged in a Techstars demo day yet. Um, so Keita, you can add some color to this in a second, but um, over the last five years, I've developed some relationship with investors uh, in the VC space, and I've got my those that I'm close with, and I'd like all of them to come to demo day. And if all of them can come in person to Dublin, I would strongly recommend that. Angel investors that are also uh, that I have relationships with and that the wider Techstars family have relationships with and that Launchpool and Alphabet have relationships with will all be welcome in Dublin for Demo Day. We'll get as many of, of them as we can here. Um, and what's come out of the woodwork really quickly over the last couple of weeks since we announced it's coming to Dublin is even more interest in that. Um, so, you know, hopefully we will be able to do this, um, you know, in person and also virtually. But Keita, maybe you can, you can add some color there. 
Yes, normally the in-person demo day, most of the investors will be invited who are easily located in Dublin, the UK overall. So like that they will be not that far from the uh, in-person demo day, but it doesn't mean that you will not have access to the uh, international global uh, investor pool that we put together and even have some kind of engagement virtual as we were building the program. So mostly, and it happens in every program, you will build strong relationships with your investors that are closer to you, uh, but it doesn't mean you don't have access to the rest of the pool of investors that are, are part of Techstars. Yep. All right, are you helping out to reallocate to Ireland to attend the program? Also, is it okay to just myself from our team, it will be present physically? Good question. We invite up to four. Is that the, yep. So like I said, the space we're looking for to get 50 people, 10 companies times four people, right? Get everybody here, get them all working. Uh, and then, you know, probably five of us from Techstars and uh, hopefully Shane uh, McQuillan and Laura Walsh from Launchpool uh, and, you know, uh, others that we, we may be bringing in and having all those folks working together in one space is fantastic. So, um, you know, yes, we, want more than just the founder to come in short. What was the other part of the question, Keta? We help them to reallocate to Ireland. Um, can you provide some insight on that, please? Um, yeah, I mean, not specifically, we will work into finding some, I mean, we will try to help you as much as we can in terms of visas, if we would create some, some like invite invitation letter about you, like coming to the program, uh, definitely we have, uh, like some kind of partnership to help you find um, where to stay, but nothing very specific. It will be just built through relationships and and, and help you get you there. Um, but definitely we'll be monitoring very closely. Like it happens quite often that founders move to the to the city where they will be located. Um, and we just help them figure out every question and things like that. Like we will create some kind of booklet so that you know where to go, what to eat, uh, where to find uh, a place, I mean, so not formally, so yes, we'll be helping you, but not formally. Yeah, and informally, I, I think is the word there, right? And that um, I've been here for 15 years. I know a bit about the city. I could tell you that, you know, there, there's already been some ideas that, um, you know, for where to locate this physically, and we're working on getting that space and we will end up with a very good space for this. That And some of those ideas would have meant that our founders might have to travel too far. And I'm like, no. No, sorry. We want this to be in a central location where it's going to be easy for everybody to get to every day uh, and just have to be able to maximize that time together. Um, and yeah, there's loads, you know, if when my fam, my sister out in Reno, Nevada, any of her friends that ever come to Ireland, I get the email. Hey, Pete, can you tell us where to go? What to, where, what to stay? And I'm like, how long are you staying? What's your budget? Blah, blah, blah. blah right. So, you know, there'll be uh, plenty of that informally. Um, to be able to get you guys uh, going in the right direction with where to base yourself. Because I know that can make a difference if you're living somewhere for a few months. You want to make sure you got a good uh, good place to, let, to rest your head, you know? Agree. Um, let me find a good one. How can, how can they get in contact with you, Mr. Townsend? You can get in touch with me what, via the office hours link uh, or it, at pete.townsend at techstars.com, right? And we're trying to, to centralize all this communication, but, um, you know, it, it's probably the, the easiest and best way to reach out is pete.townsend. I'll put it right here uh, at techstars.com. Um, there we go, pete.townsend at techstars.com. The easiest way to get in touch with me. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. You can hit me up there on Twitter. Uh, and then, you know, if we really get to talking, you know, Telegram and so on and so forth. So. Right. And I will suggest once you, I mean, imagining that you is going to be getting a lot of requests to connect with him. So the best way to do it is uh, just, it, I mean, through the office hours links when they, when you receive this after this call, or when you know there is like an opportunity for office hours as well, um do not try to just engage like hey can we have a chat maybe let's find the, the right way to do it but if it's something definitely Pete, thank you so much for making yourself available but just be thoughtful that he might receive a lot of uh, requests yeah I, this kind of thing. I, i'm gonna get loads of email here folks so um you know it's it's 
let's to to organize all this like kate's is saying uh please get in touch through the office hours and um you know but did want to be open to folks and that you know you could probably figure out my email address if you tried because it's kind of everywhere um so but yeah in, in order to make sure that we do get the best response here uh mm -hmm. and that we have the most coordinated communication with everybody that's interested in applying to the program um if we can go through the office hours link um that's going to be the best way to do it okay and just for everybody's attention, we just posted the link there in the chat so that you can order for some office hours, ask for office hours. Um, let me see, guys, a poll questions so that I can see what you want to be answered. Um, Which sector of Web3 are you personally most excited about seeing in project supply from mm. DeFi, P2E, et cetera? Like I said, when I read Bitcoin white paper, I saw a new framework for financial services. I used to say capital markets, okay? So my background being capital markets, I love anything that's killing all this ridiculous inefficiency of silos out there. And I look at when I then a year later read the Ethereum white paper, I saw the beginnings of, of DeFi and it wasn't called DeFi back, whatever it was called. I just saw an opportunity to decentralize finance. Um, so if you really want to pull at my heartstrings, um, it's going to be something in that space. But that's the old Pete, okay? Uh, and that's still a big, big part of me and a big part of where I'm working with companies right now on an advisory basis, uh, one in particular that is kind of flattening the whole framework of uh, a, a portion of the capital markets and the whole value chain of the capital markets. I'm really energized and excited um, by working with folks like that. On the other hand, I've said this um, a few times in that dynamic NFTs, I want the entire Boston Red Sox team to have an NFT of every player, just like baseball cards. And that when the Red Sox win, I want their arms to go up in a V. And the picture of them on that card, no matter how ridiculous it might look, is them with their arms up in a V. And there's a there's a uh, a meaning for that that I will share with you at another time. And then when they lose, their hands go back down and they go back to a, a neutral posture. Okay, I want to see that happen. Now I said this to a founder in Austin, Texas, that I'm working with, and he spent now. I, I don't know if he's doing it because I, I said I'd love that, but he said, you know, just on a call the other day, Pete, you know what? I've been working on dynamic NFTs for the, for the last month. Um, and, you know, th that's coming. And I'd love to see someone nail that. Um, I read the book Ready Player One at exactly the right time uh, by Ernest Klein in the last month. Uh, and just, you know, I see that future with, um, you know, this uh, virtual reality universe. And in this virtual reality game called the Oasis on uh, in the book Ready Player One, where everybody just goes to get away from it all. And that, you know, uh, never mind the world's problems, we're gonna go into the Oasis and just uh, live our lives there and have fun. Um, now society's gone to complete crap because of that. And, you know, let's not talk about the dystopian potential for all of this. But, you know, when you look at that game, you can see, all right, someone earning credits by playing a game in Oasis, you can take those credits and monetize them offline and go buy food with it, right? To keep you alive. Uh, when you are, you know, buying new armor to put on yourself in Oasis, virtual armor, well, those are NFTs, right? Because you own that. Um, when you are borrowing money from some guild in order to buy that armor, right? And there's some liquidity pools that sit behind that guild. Well, that's DeFi. And then all of that just lives on a blockchain decentralized uh, protocol, right? So you could see all that. You see all these building blocks. So I'm looking for these building blocks um, because I said to folks that if I wasn't in this space, I'd be a builder. I'd be an architect, not an architect, a builder, lifting all the blocks, right? And putting them in place. Um, so, you know, if that gives any insight into my mindset, uh, then, you know, uh, hopefully that does the trick. It seems like you're very passionate about it. So yeah. it's going to be, sounds very exciting. Um, so there's more specific questions. Oh, I mean, I can answer this one. Like how many applications do you get approximately who wants to attend this program? So it's a lot. <laughs> it depends from program to program. Um, this is the first one we do this program specifically. So 
We get a lot of applicants, applications. It's a very competitive program. Overall tech stories, you will see that. Um, and we normally, yeah, I mean, the end of the day, we just want to have 10 amazing companies. Exactly. Um, let's see. Okay, this is like more specific, but if we are planning to add blockchain to our existing platform where we are rewarding with points, do you think this is a good program to apply? Blockchain, um, I like to see a pitch that doesn't mention the word blockchain, right? Because it should be about the value proposition and about what you're delivering to your users, what you're delivering to your customers. And um, I would, to be able to answer that question as yes, um, the, the audit trail of that decision of the founding team to go in that direction would need to be based on, listen, we started going in one direction. Um, we had some success with, you know, talking to customers and, and getting this going and we thought we should build this. But then when we thought deeply about it, we're like, you know what, wait a minute, what we were originally planning for the tech stock stack behind this, it's going to be a lot more efficient, a lot better for the customer at the end, if we build it on top of a blockchain protocol. Okay. That's how I would answer that question. Yes. Um, if this was got a business going, um, we want to actually take advantage of the fact that blockchain is such a hot investment space right now. So we're going to, we're going to staple that onto our business in some way, shape or form. Then my answer would be no. <laughs> so, um, you know, but again, that is macro high level view. That is not, Hey, I'm looking at the pitch. I've met the founders. I really understand where they're going and I can think deeply about this, right? Obviously not being in that position, but that's just my macro view on this. Thanks, Pete. Um, I think we have one time for one more question and maybe the last one. I'm sorry for everyone that we didn't get to see your answer your questions at this point. We will try to get back to you, um, get it a read, Pete and I, and, and answer those later on. Um, but last one that is similar to the previous one is, we are building a product that does not involve blockchain. Is this program also for API infrastructure startups? This is a blockchain focused program. It's Web3. Um, and you know, uh, that being said that, um, this is all about building blocks for the metaverse really, uh, in, in, in what we're saying for the decentralized web, obviously de the decentralized web and the metaverse are, are two different things. And with the decentralized web, um, bridging fiat into that is a critical component. Uh, and the way I look at it is delivering the institutional wealth that's out there in the world right now and making it easy for that to to, to come into um, the decentralized web, into the crypto environment. Bringing all that institutional wealth over is hard. And, um, you know, I posed this question to Max Kordick at Token 2049 on Friday. And I said, you know, do you think the, the growth in crypto is going to come from the bridging of institutional wealth? Or do you think it's going to come from those natively that are just entering uh, the crypto space at the individual level. And he thought it's gonna come from the latter. Um, now, that being said, I'm still gonna be a big proponent of delivering institutional wealth into the crypto space because I think there's so much of my old finance background that can be completely uh, you know, brought into the digital realm and made that much more efficient for customers and users of financial services. So um, you know, in a roundabout way, uh, it's gonna take all kinds, but you know, one of the basic requirements for this is that there is a clear um, foot in the space of the, de the decentralized web uh, and, you know, that you are building on blockchain um, and that this, you, you, there is an, uh, an element of a, a, not an element, but that a token is core and central uh, to your business. All right. I think that's it for today. We spent one hour talking about tech stars. A lot of questions were answered. Thank you so much, Pete, for sharing all this knowledge on what is coming. Very Thank excited. you. This was my first AMA. I absolutely loved it. Um, and <laughs> am looking forward to getting some insights from uh, from those that were uh, those engaged with this. So thank you so much for everyone for attending and for your brilliant questions. I really appreciate it. All right. So stay in touch. You have the call to action if you want to apply, if you want to ask for office hours as well. The link is in the chat. And I uh, hope it was useful for everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Ciao, Pete. Ciao.